It takes only a quick look at this self-portrait of a German painter, Albrecht Dürer, to realize that we are dealing with a genius. Indeed, an artist with the powers of a magician. Notice the remarkably faithful detail with which the garment, hair, and the face of the painter are rendered. The man appears to be alive, more so than if someone had taken a picture of him with a modern camera. And so, the master is looking at us now in the 21st century, despite the fact that he created this painting over 500 years ago. We know this from the text on the left showing the year 1500 and the painter's initials. The artist appears to engage in a wordplay as the letters A and D could stand for his name, but also for Anno Domini, which in Latin means in the year of our Lord, in this case, the year 1500. I am introducing Durer because he is the creator of a puzzling engraving called Melancholy One. The mysterious engraving depicts a young woman apparently grappling with sadness as she meditates among objects which must have brought her joy on happier days. The clutter notwithstanding, the place appears to be secluded as if she purposely sought solitude and tried to avoid company of others. What could possibly trouble this beautiful woman locked in a thousand mile stare, almost unaware of her surroundings? Would a master of Durer's caliber leave us any hint? He surely must have. All Renaissance painters gave metaphoric meaning to pretty much every detail in their works. Why don't we take a look around and see if we can decipher the master's puzzle? The young woman is clearly educated in natural sciences. She's holding a compass and a book on her lap. We see here an ornament showing binary digits 011011. Hmm, that's 27 in decimal. Could she be 27? She may very well be, but let's search further. There is a perfect sphere at the woman's feet. Even more remarkable is the rhomboidal solid which appears to show, wait. Really? Look at this. A faint impression of a human skull. Ah, no good. How can one entertain any positive thoughts with that kind of symbols around? But let's not give in to this negativity just yet. Memento Mori reminders were still in vogue at the time. Many painters embedded some kind of a skull symbol in their works. Next we have an empty weight. Hmm, an important instrument for an alchemist at the time, but hardly helping our cause of explaining the woman's gloom. How about the hourglass? Clearly a reminder that she's not getting any younger. Hmm. We might be getting somewhere. In the 1500s, a 27-year-old woman must have been considered middle age. Perhaps that's what worries our scientist. Hey, look at the keys. This is no ordinary woman. This is a woman with authority. Are those literal keys, say, to some special place? Or, perhaps, symbolic keys like keys to knowledge. Either way, only someone withstanding would have been given the responsibility of guarding the access to a place of importance. We see also the usual signature of the master indicating that the work was completed in 1514. Ah, the woman's sadness is contagious, the little angel of inspiration. A genius, is also quite subdued as he whittles lifelessly on his small stone table. And look at the dog, curled up, finding nothing interesting to chase after, or even to sniff around. And so, they all sit here alone in silence, far from the bustle of the town which we see at a distance halfway down to the horizon.
So, have we found the clue? Is it the age, and the unstoppable passage of time that is causing the woman's melancholy? Absent any other evidence, that would seem to be the case. Wait. What is this? How could we miss this obvious feature? At first it looked like a painting. Wow. It's a Sudoku puzzle in the shape of a heart. Now it all makes a lot more sense. She is in love. A love that clearly was not returned. That the heartless man did not realize who he had dealt with is evident. So that was the clue the master left for us. A heart made of numbers. A substitute for the heart that the man was lacking. Wait. This puzzle appears to have a link. Do you see? Durer must have wanted us to click it. Wow, what is this? A puzzle in the shape of the number pi? Hmm. And look here, a puzzle in the shape of an umbrella. And here, a puzzle in the shape of the Pac-Man. These are puzzles like no others. This is a site with Sudoku puzzles that depict recognizable objects. And what's that? A story, accompanying each puzzle. This one is about the Pac-Man. It says here, that Pac-Man was supposed to be a game which never ended, and that one was supposed to reach a higher and higher level with even higher levels always available. But due to a bug the game has apparently only 255 levels. This is because at that point half of the screen is corrupted, and the players cannot see their moves. No one has been able to play through the 255th level despite a $100,000 reward. Man, this is cool. Wait. They have a gift book too? Wow. 101 pictorial Sudoku puzzles and magic stories that go with them. Rather than being just a table of randomly placed numbers, each puzzle in this book depicts an animal, a symbol or an object. The puzzles serve as illustrations to the popular articles and in return, the articles give life back to the objects depicted in the puzzles. This book and website will provide you with a unique puzzle-solving experience in the company of James Bond, Harry Houdini, Sherlock Holmes, Space Explorers, Spanish Conquistadores, Lightning Bugs and Electrical Plugs, and the rest of the 101 characters, animals and objects of note. You will also find here the puzzle that started it all. The one that accompanied our melancholy scientist on Durer's engraving. So, to make the long story short, if you are searching for a gift of magic this book and website are for you.